Okay, so since I was away cleaning and moving, I couldn't test the new killer right away. I've seen other content creators play him, and that's really all I need to provide you with a good review of this reveal. After all, we all know that as one of the best killer mains on the planet, I don't actually need to play the killer to make this video. Space Coconut The Nemesis is a mediocre M1 killer. He has a short projectile attack like the Deathslinger or Pyramid Head that gets slightly longer if you spend the extra effort to level it up deliberately through the match. The attack will only injure and damage survivors once they're infected, leading to some awkward decisions depending on the state of the match. Like the Plague, he gets everyone sick and they can cleanse themselves out of that sickness. Unlike the Plague, however, players have limited times that they can cleanse, which is a great choice. If this was all the killer did, then we would just call him Plague 2.0. But the mechanics that the devs created to go along with him not only make him a more interesting killer to face, but opens up new possibilities for already established killers that need tweaking, and most importantly, it could also lead to the DC bots we've been waiting for. The zombies are the coolest addition the devs have done in a long time. The breakable walls were the last cool addition in my opinion, which were unfortunately behaviored in their implementation. While they're not particularly effective, nor the primary attack weapon of Nemesis, they are moving obstacles for the survivors. Much like the twins, some tactical elements are at play that allows the killer to essentially be two places at once and give the survivors something other than the killer to worry about. As for other implementation of this AI, Imagine if the waterlogged shoe or scarred hand for the hag created phantasms that would move and attack the survivors like the zombies do when the trap was triggered. While it's very unlikely, the bot mechanics are there and will hopefully be expanded upon by the devs in the future. If a player DCs, the remaining survivors are left alone with the killer and are at a tremendous disadvantage. But thanks to the AI potential of the zombies or the tutorial bots, they could be applied to a bot survivor that fills the place of players who DC early to keep the match relatively balanced for the remaining live survivors. But back to Nemesis. Nemesis is a very cool addition to the game. He's fairly well balanced compared to what the devs have done in the past, but this is because he's such a simple killer. As we've seen from past killers, when you get crazy with the powers, they become more difficult to balance. The zombies are what make Nemesis interesting. While he has no control over the zombies and can use them during a match to power up, he doesn't necessarily need them to do well as a killer, depending on the quality of the survivors you're up against. M1 survivors if they get close, use the tentacle if they try to pallet loop or vault, and infect them often to get the tier 3 mutation as quickly as you can. Simple. In the end, I think that the devs just created a mediocre killer with an interesting gimmick. Wrapped up in the skin of a popular license that behavior didn't create, that the devs were careful to find the balance between staying true to the source material and what would be cohesive to the game. They played it safe, and it paid off with the nemesis. In the next video, we'll talk about the beautiful disaster that is the Raccoon City Police Department, so look forward to that. Until then, I'm Space Coconut, and you're welcome. <laughs>